Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Inks and I'm from IGS Electronics and today is going to be our part 2 video where we're going to be continuing setting up our Siemens uh, CB1241 RS485 card to communicate with our S7, uh, S7 V20, not S7, V20, V20 Siemens inverter drive. So today's uh, video is all about setting that up in TR Porta, establishing communications and of course, we're doing a live test. And don't forget to watch the previous video if you haven't seen where we the wire, check the wiring and how we set up the drive. That is going to be in a, a part of the playlist. Uh, this is a, all about big uh, part. Uh, actually, I'm going to leave this uh, video in the description below. So, and also all the manuals and anything else I believe will benefit you brush away is going to be in the description below. So without further ado, let's get started. <laughs> Here we are, so uh, as you can see I already have uh, pre-programmed uh, some of the blocks in here. I'm going to run you through details of why we choose these blocks and why we uh, done them uh, the way they are. So again, this is uh, this is just an example. Uh, this is probably not going to be the way you would program it, because programming, when it comes down to programming, there's a lot, uh, a lot of people do it, uh, created a lot bigger networks and things like that. This is just to show you how to get yourself going. As you can see down here, I have a, a uh, USS drive DB and I have a two uh, OBs in here one is OB30 uh, uh, which is a cyclic interrupt and one is the OB1 which is my main main, main program OB so uh, if we go to the cyclic interrupt yeah uh, this is where you are setting up set, set up your port and to be able to do that you need to go into instructions and then we're going to go down to communications and uh, click on communications down there and then go into USS down here. As you can see down there, you will see is a USS port setup, USS drive, USS uh, uh, write parameters and USS, uh, 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 sorry, read parameters and USS write parameters. So first we're going to look at the USS port. USS port is something you need to set up for the PLC to be able to communicate with your drive. So, and to really read up why cyclic interrupt, I'm not going to get into cyclic, uh, what a cyclic interrupt is, but I'll give you a quick description what a uh, Siemens says. If you click on the block and then click F1, it will take you into the, come on, I'm pretty sure I clicked F1. It's taking its time. Here it is. So we opened up, weirdly enough, there. Mm, here we go. So we will open open these uh, this uh, sort of a information system where you can read up on it. As you can see in here, it says a CM1241 can only work on a firm. It gives you really really detailed the information uh, what is what, and it says only uh, firmware version V2.1 uh, of the module. So I do make sure those uh, that firmware matches uh, or is above. So and then you see down there you have to call the port. So it says in there your program must be uh, must execute that US port instruction often enough to prevent time uh, timeouts in the drive. You should therefore call USS port instruction from a cyclic interrupt OB to prevent the timeout. So that's why it has to be that the call itself has to be done in a cyclic interrupt. So uh, that's pretty much that and this then explains you what each thing is in, in detail and every single block in uh, uh, Siemens itself is able you are able to find out in here. So let's go that off. So as you can see down there, first one is going to be your actually card port, the port itself. So you can do that by just clicking on there, and it will come up with all the uh, on the list that is connected. So and just find your card and click on it, and then that'll be your port in here. So the board rate, remember, that's the one we selected in the drive as eight, which stands at eight thirty-eight thousand four hundred. You can check out in the manual itself. Uh, error status is uh, entirely up to you what you're doing down here. I just I just put in my temps for now So and a uh, status as well. I'll put that in my temps as well for now So I'm not gonna uh, use it for anything. So it's just gonna be in temps in there So I haven't done that. So this guy in here is actually the one you do in AOB one. So and that will be uh, Let's go back to communications itself. So uh, oh I'm not supposed to do that and you can see down there, this is this guy in here, USS drive, and this is where the block is going to come up. And this is where you more or less can uh, start uh, adding 
uh, flags to it or, or tags and uh, how, whichever way you want to uh, how you control it I'm gonna be turning uh, controlling it from internal flags so because I'm gonna be using the HMI to control it so which is oh, which down here I'll show that in a minute so as you can see I added my flags which is for a run it's just a standard for a run but again if you want to read up for it which what each thing does click F1 it will take you to the again in a systems page where you can read up on it and what, what each the each of these things means uh, damn it's taking long to open this up it's a big big manual so that's why it's taken him like it's it's usual so much information there as you can see and there he explains you what each thing is what each thing does and so on so on so this side in here will be operating the drive which is our, our inputs and this is going to be your outputs in here as you can see down there i have a, a memory down there dedicated to uh, read out the actual uh, actual frequency so and you don't need to do any scaling because the, this block has already more or less been scaled so uh, from one uh, from zero to 100 percent but if you want to scale it differently you're more than welcome to do that we are going to be working with 0 to 100%, which is already part of this a block. So, and it can work with, it can interact with uh, 16 parameters. And if you want more parameters that you want to read or, or write them, then you, you, all you need to do is, as you can see down there, you need to do a separate block, which is a read parameter or a write parameter. Uh, if you want to change some parameters from within the PLC, you can do that as well. That is that, that those additions are down there if you wish to do that. But again, that's it. So well, this is already loaded into the controller. We're going to jump on the controller in a minute, have a look at it, where, how to know that everything is working well. So this is the DB, so basically you would just usually uh, DB1, you just copy that one and go in a cyclic interrupt and just uh, paste it in here and that pretty much this block will be ready and uh, quickly show you what my HMI screen. Again guys, this is not a programming deck, there's a lot of good people out there that make a lot of program videos for you to look at how to, what to do with this later on. So uh, let's up, uh, open my uh, small HMI screen. So once it's taken its time, uh, you can uh, you got the start, a stop, and the actual speed readout, and there's this edit speed readout, and I want to change that. Come on. To I'm gonna change that to a. I'm pretty sure that is forwards. Forwards. And then we're going to change that one to reverse. How you do your flags or tags, or whatever you want to call them. I think you spell bloody hell. I'll do. So, uh, and uh, so, yeah, so and done that. So, uh, here we go. We'll just quickly change that one. So, uh, so yeah, this is this is where my HMI is, and as you can see down there, I've got edit speed in there, and I'm basically well, to edit speed. I'm just using the basic move instruction because it's a real number, so uh, I just move uh, zero to one, zero to one hundred. We had the move instruction. Uh, you move in there, and it just sends it into the uh, sheet set the speed sets up in there, so and that will change the speed of the drive. So that's pretty much there is. So, so what we're gonna do now? Let's load this in and jump onto actual uh, HMI and the drive itself, and see how that works. And before we do that, I forgot to say one more thing. So as you can see down there, there is, there is uh, it says drive inset. This is where you will add your uh, drive number. Remember for the parameters, but we set it up in there. And this will be uh, is that uh, the len. We I, I kept that as as a two. So uh, do read up in manual what that is. But by default, the drive itself is stands at two. So I'm not going to get too into too much detail uh, for this one as well. So make sure these numbers match exactly how they are in the drive as well. So I'm to that. Now guys got to get the get bleh, get to the testing. Here we are. So uh, here's our HMI. So uh, I'm gonna try to put that in a perspective, in a picture more or less like that without any much of a light. So first, as you can see, we're gonna go in and send in a 50, which is gonna be 50 percent. So as you can see, the drive is responding. That asks 25 hertz, and then we just uh, click a start. And as you can see there, it, it's feeding back what frequency actually is. There you go. So I don't know why it's not going to uh, full, but it is what it is. So I'm going to go 100. Center, there you go. 
50. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is more, more or less USS Bass using a, uh, forgot the card's name, one of the, the uh, RS-45 communications with uh, the drive, without much of it, so if you can do that, it will just uh, ram down, it will uh, go into negative, which is in a reverse. My acceleration, the acceleration is really, really a uh, slow, so probably about 10 seconds. And that's it. And uh, here we go. So, and that's how uh, the system works. So, and that'll be it for these two videos. Hopefully, this is helping you out and getting yourself going and uh, setting your drives up. And as again, I do believe you can do, if I'm not going I think you can do 16 or 12 or 16 drives. I can't uh, fully remember per a network. So, you can add three per, uh, per, per one of the S1200 series. But, uh, uh, Siemens PLC. So, uh, so yeah, uh, I haven't said that. Uh, don't forget to like the video if you like the video. Don't forget to smash that, um, yeah, smash that subscribe button if you do like what we're doing here or not. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.